good evening sir and good evening good evening yeah i'm sorry for the ladies my name is ravan sir i am the convener of debrief i along with my team uh, welcome all of you to this 21st webinar of the debrief webinar series our speaker today is uh, mr justice kurian jhu who recently retired as a judge of the supreme court of india all of us have interacted with uh, justice kurian joseph either in the form of appearing before him in or through judgments i do not really want to uh, give a long drawn introduction to our speaker about our speaker and labor the time any further i will however quote uh, our attorney general mr k k venugopal as i feel he was able to identify the bar member sentiments about justice kurian joseph um, at the farewell that uh, the supreme court bar association had organized uh, when justice joseph retired um, the attorney general said and very rightly so in all our opinion that if anybody were to conduct a poll as to who was the nicest judge to have held the office of a judge of the supreme court uh, justice kurian joseph would win by a large margin so we all wholeheartedly adopt this statement of the learned attorney general thank you thank you one of the main reasons sir we share this sentiment is the compassionate manner in which you conducted your court as junior practitioners we've had occasions to appear before you and while we waited for our matters to uh, be called out many a time we would be privy to you going out of your way to persuade parties to resolve their disputes now as lawyers of course even in your experience as a lawyer you must have uh, you must have seen how difficult it is to persuade a part, persuade a client and especially a successful client to settle the dispute and to resolve the dispute especially at an appellate stage uh, we this is why we requested you to speak about alternate dispute resolution mechanisms and frame the topic as the importance of mediation in litigation at the first blush perhaps uh, it may seem to be an oxymoron because litigation itself is adversarial and no litigating party is ever ready to really uh, 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 go for mediation but i'm certain uh, by the end of this lecture we will all see that mediation is in fact very important in litigation uh, without taking any more of your time i would now request our speaker to deliver his address over to you sir thank you abhay i'm really touched by your uh, overwhelming words of uh, praise for me thank you um, it's not personal to uh, kurian i always tell the judges you know it is the the obligation of any judge to have a constitutional compassion this is how i look at it am i audible to everybody hello yes sir you are loud and clear yeah very good yeah thank you yeah so constitutional compassion always uh, i i uh, discharge very passionately i am still am very passionate about it because see otherwise you know why are you appointed as a judge you are appointed as a judge to interpret law and uh, apply law in a particular set of facts and to render justice so how do you find out justice justice uh, without mercy according to me is uh, arbitrariness and mercy without uh, justice is equally arbitrariness and it is imprudent also therefore a judge is called upon to be uh, an instrument in the hands of the constitution to render justice with uh, a constitutional mercy what is the constitutional mercy constitutional mercy is for we the people and who are we the people we the people you know you might have seen that i have heard that the famous uh, is a constitution of the baker butcher and candlestick maker today i don't think that the baker would come in that category butcher would come into that category or candlestick maker would come into that category maybe after covid is true but the post constitution maybe after uh, two three decades uh, these people um, i don't think would uh, constitute that uh, the the uh, the we whom the constitution stood for if you ask me today who are those we i would say the migrant workers 
the asha workers the safai karmacharis maybe these are the categories who would come to this constitution with the people so when we interpret the constitution these are the places whom should we should have in our mind who are the the last the least and the lost so in interpreting any provision in the constitution we should have uh, we should have this in our mind that this constitution is for those people survival of the rich and survival of the fit not an issue at all they will survive but the protection of the poor and protection of the weak and protection of this uh, poor and weak i would to say the least the last and the lost to whom only the 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 court can lean for because uh, in the political policies they may not be a vote bank because they are an unidentified group they may be an illiterate group and uh, as uh, the very word says you know they are not organized also so the political parties may not be invested in them because they are not organized but the constitution should be invested in them because it is the constitutional obligation of the court as the guardian of the constitution to protect the dignity of uh, the individual we see the preamble it speaks about uh, justice equality liberty and fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual for us indians it doesn't matter whether somebody is rich or poor somebody is uh, beautiful or ugly looking somebody is uh, learned or not learned somebody belongs to this religion or that religion somebody belongs to this caste or that caste somebody belongs to this tribe or that tribe somebody belongs to the south or somebody belongs to the east somebody belongs to the west or somebody belongs to the north irrespective of caste color creed religion language sex region or you are a material possession or you are a um, positions all are equal before law and all are entitled to equal protection of law the moment this equal protection of law is denied at the hands of the people who rule the country we call it government i'm i don't mean a political sense party sense but i'm saying the moment this equal protection of uh, the dignity is denied by the government it is the that juncture the guardian should wake up it is the duty of the guardian to protect them the very word the very meaning of the word guard and guardian is the same if i am a guardian of my wards even if my one of my children is uh, uh, lazy ugly looking uh, you know not smart um, not up to the states or whom i expect him etc even then when he cries as a guardian is my conscience that should uh, respond i don't say no 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 i won't give you i won't give you food i, I want to help you to uh, work i won't provide you a seat in my car because you're ugly you are dirty no 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 go out no and no guardian will ever say no conscientious guardian will say that no guardian with a conscience will say that that's so where no i i just wanted to speak something about this uh, constitutional compassion is not the charity of a judge but the obligation of the court and if the court does not remember that obligation what to do there is no other place to go the last resort is the court the first resort is the government last resort is of uh, is the court yeah let me leave that topic let me come to this uh, alternate dispute resolution this mouse click totally because abai said something about compassion so the moment it comes in you know, my passion simply burns yeah 
what is this alternate dispute resolution the moment we say alternate the moment we say alternate it's it's uh, not a normal method normal method is if you have a grievance it becomes a dispute then it becomes a litigation that is the normal route we take recourse to the court for redress of our grievances for settling our rights and uh, pro for protection of our rights also we go to court like that but if there is any other place what is a court by the way court is a service not a place where people you see we have uh, this uh, idea we conceive a court like this in a place where you know, somebody sits on top and uh, somebody calls him my lord your honor and uh, all those you know it comes up like that that is not the the situation that is not actually the, the idea of court. the idea of court is that it's a service where you know under the constitution and the laws you get your disputes resolved by taking recourse to constitutional methods it's simply called rule of law you go and you get your rights protected well that's the place and that is that is a service so let's forget about this uh, huge bill the attire or uh, the the what uh, the paraphernalia attached to it etc it's a service rendered to the people under the constitution so in the normal route that service is you know through an established procedure we call it civil procedure code we call it uh, criminal procedure code and we have the evidence and then etc uh, etc et it goes in it's, it's a, there's an established procedure but with all that if we can really see if this grievance can be redressed or dispute can be resolved even without the normal method of uh, uh, the, the taking the course to on the procedural uh, rigmarole or procedural aspects why do we waste our time what happens you know i have a property dispute with my neighbor when i say this you know uh, in the most literate state kerala even during this uh, pandemic maybe i don't know whether this depression was a cause two people both are aged 80 they are in the 80s and their neighbors they had a property dispute you now one man you know maybe i don't know he got whatever reason i do not know he he brutally killed this neighbor and the reason is that there was uh, a pending dispute between them on, on, on um, in respect of their uh, property neighborhood maybe it's a boundary dispute nothing else i do not know i'm not saying i'm not saying anything about the merits of the matter but see look at the look at the the the, the way the mindset worked even at the age of 80 both are 80 so how many years the litigation should have been pending between them what result the reason is according to our system prevailing now your grievance becomes a dispute disputes becomes a litigation litigation go to the first instance somebody wins second instance somebody wins third instance somebody wins and you have the supreme court also there also no somebody will somebody i do not think that there is in a, in a litigation process the court will be in a position to to make both happy unless there is such a judge who will be in a position to uh, convince the other side as to why he lost now he should be he should be in a position to educate that uh, party as to why he lost and why the other party wins both are important but is it possible in our system now will any lawyer agree even if the judge convinces the other side the lawyer says you know no, that is your version but uh, what i argued was the right thing lawyer will never give up and the party who lost also will never give up that is because because of you do not understand law correctly or because you know they may even attribute motives to the judges also sometimes yes yeah, forget that aspect so it is in that context uh, i was looking at a situation where 
the people should be happy, both should be happy. I always, when I go to National Judicial Academy um, for training of judicial officers, I used to ask them a question. Civil judge, junior judge, or senior judge, whenever they come, um, they're all judges come, but particular to these people and district judges, I used to ask them one question. Have you, in your experience, maybe long years, have you ever seen a client going out of the court saying that, you know, my rights have been vindicated, I'm happy. Even if I have a dispute again, I will come to this place only where I, because I find my self-respect is protected, my rights have been understood, and you know, this is the place where I should come again. The 99% of, uh, even I can say with the confidence it is 100%. People have said, you know, <laughs> they have only seen people going out of the court cursing the institution, not the judge, cursing the institution. Maybe because of the delay, maybe because of the money they had to spend, maybe because of their frustration, maybe because of uh, you know circumstances beyond anybody's control. They only seen cursing the people. So my uh, attempt all through my experience as a judge, uh, spanning our almost to 19 years, 18 years, and uh, maybe six months or so, yeah, is to see that you know, to, how to get out of the people from the court at the earliest. So even before this established mediation proceedings uh, started, I, in my own way, started uh, this mediation when I was a judge in Kerala, when there was 10 years then. I used to involve lawyers, train them in open court, just give them a brief and asking them to, I don't do help these parties to speak and settle. Yeah, my result was almost uh, uh, 75%. Only very few, no, 70%. Yeah, yeah, in Kerala, my result was 90%. Yes, very, only very few people uh, couldn't meet with success. That is because of uh, some extraneous reasons in the sense, you know, some party was not available or some other case was pending somewhere else or, uh, you know, things like that only. So my attempt was always to, you know, to get out of the, helping the people get out of the court. How do you do it? In uh, when the section 89 CPC was uh, amended, we have uh, four methods of alternate dispute. So, regular method is court, alternate is outside court. What is that alternate four methods? One is arbitration. Again, it is governed by the Arbitration Conciliation Act 1996, as of now, uh, where we have, uh, which I do now, I'm an arbitrator now, uh, maybe sole, maybe co arbitrator, maybe presiding arbitrator. I do arbitration ever since my retirement in number 18. Then um, I do my mediation also, second is mediation. So one is arbitration, the other is mediation. There is uh, judge in vote conciliation, fourth is log and alert. This uh, arbitration is governed by the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. And this uh, log and alert is governed by the um, uh, Legal Service Authorities Act, where you get the service of uh, retired personnel or some um, well-meaning people also to help you to find out uh, a solution for the problems and where we have uh, uh, this conciliation where you know you can actually give your evaluative assessment of the situation and persuade the parties to this assessment. And the last one which I want to stress today is mediation. So what is mediation? Mediation actually is something which is in the blood of everybody. This is what I have found always. All lawyers are good mediators according to me. But they need to be trained also because this 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 needs to be uh, what you call systematic and organized. So that is how to take forward mediation. In mediation, what is important is that you know the parties should agree that this case can be referred to a trained mediator or a mediator, whatever whatever name may call it, a mediator. And uh, you know the mediator will uh, will be a neutral person. Number one, number two. He should be in a position to get the confidence of both the parties. Number three, the proceedings are confidential. Even if the mediation fails, uh, he cannot tell the court as to why it is failed. He can only write one sentence, mediation failed. Uh, I always write mediation as of now failed. I do my mediation, I do mediation also. In many cases, uh, corporate disputes, uh, property disputes, matrimonial disputes, even patent disputes have been referred to me from the Supreme Court or other courts. I do mediation also, uh, along with my arbitration. Yeah, 
So the, it's been neutral person. He should have the confidence about the people and uh, he should maintain confidentiality. And uh, what I do is even if there's some difficulty, I only say mediation failed as of now. So confidentiality. And then, you know, with the assistance of the parties and the lawyers, uh, you'll find uh, a solution. How do you find a solution? I'll tell you the mediation process now. So before the mediator, the parties come. So the mediator will make the parties aware of their uh, respective positions and the relationship they are in. If it is matrimonial, the relationship, property, neighborhood, neighborhood, corporate, the, the, the legal position and in the corporate, uh, uh, what they call uh, legal relationship they have to maintain, etc. And then, uh, you know, uh, all these disputes, you know, as I told you, you know, from grievance becomes a dispute, becomes a litigation. So from the, the, the mediator's next uh, great role is to identify what the real grievance is. The projected uh, dispute, you know, because the communications have been cut and the lawyers respectively argue, argue from each side, no, there's no proper communication with the parties. So the, the next uh, attempt of the mediator is to restore the communication with the parties. And then uh, his next uh, third stage, you know, he will try to identify where lies the problem. We call it identifying the interest or what the underlying interest. Once the interest has been identified, where lies actually the problem? Once it is identified, then the, the, will, the mediator helps the parties to evolve uh, options uh, uh, for solution of the problem. Once options are, uh, uh, no, um, uh, made available from the parties, then the mediator will see if both options are not available, uh, not acceptable to the parties, then the mediator will help the parties to go for alternatives. And finally, if one of the alternatives suggested by the uh, mediator is agreeable, then uh, not suggested by the mediator, suggested by the parties is otherwise acceptable to the parties themselves, then the mediator will see whether uh, it is uh, legitimate because the, the agreement should be for a legitimate, it should be permissible under law. Settlement should be a legitimate settlement. And if it is legitimate, then he will take uh, a commitment from the parties that they, how they are going to honor this settlement. And this uh, will be drafted and then signed by the parties and the respective lawyers and then sent to the court. And the court passes a decree or an order or a judgment, whatever we call it, you know, in terms of this mediation settlement. This is the process of mediation. So why in, in the, what is the advantage of mediation? In advantage of mediation is, you know, both sides uh, feel happy. That's the greatest advantage. Unlike in the court, one party is happy, one party is partly happy, one party is partly, uh, you know, uh, uh, angry or, you know, partly uh, dissatisfied and, you know, disgusted and frustrated, you know, then the mind works, you know, to how to wreak vengeance, et cetera, et cetera. This is not both sides because they are understood, acknowledged, and uh, they, they, they have accepted and this is the best solution they can have. And then there is peace in society, peace in the family, peace in the community, and you know, the things are uh, taken forward. This is the greatest advantage of a mediation. Where there is a win, we call it a win-win situation. In my experience uh, in the Supreme Court uh, for five years and eight months, I've seen 50%, more than 50% of the disputes which have a civil uh, angle, including corporate, are worth trying for mediation. And that is what true also in the high courts and trial courts. So people have a, a misunderstanding that mediation is only in a matrimonial dispute. You know? That of course is certainly true, but uh, uh, I find that you know, it's more effective. I don't say more effective, it's quite effective in the corporate disputes as well. That's why in NCLT, NCLT and NCLT, they are referring cases to me and others also for uh, uh, what do you call um, mediation and we are attempting to it. You know? Because many corporate disputes, there will be an underlying problem, maybe among the promoters, maybe among some of the shareholders, maybe among some of the directors, maybe, you know, so there's something somewhere which you can identify and if you can actually settle that to the end of it. So, um, um, the Civil Courts Act, there's a pre settlement, uh, pre litigation mediation, which is made mandatory. Uh, in surface, also there is mediation. In quasi criminal cases, also, we are trying mediation. Uh, like, you know, in 323, for example, the, the uh, IPC 323, uh, you call it, you know, symbol heart. 
Uh, it must be a simple dispute. And you know, if the parties are sent for mediation, they agree, they can uh, have a compound thing. Uh, they can compound the offense, you know. Um, in the, the, what they call, maybe the victim gets a little compensation or, you know, they, uh, uh, an, apolog tend an apology is tendered, etc. you know. So the relationship also is restored and the parties are happy and there is no conviction also because uh, uh, under 323.8, um, uh, there is no conviction. It is uh, acquittal only. So that way, uh, in, cost, in criminal cases also, and some of the costly criminal disputes also, this mediation can be tried. I've seen there are three problems. Let me wind up by saying just three things. Uh, what is the problem in why this mediation is not taking, why is is not taken off quite well? I don't find it is taken off quite well. One, not because the mediators are not there. There are trained mediators, but uh, um, uh, I don't say that you know all trained mediators are the the experts. It all depends because it, it, it's a uh, it's a skill. Let me say skill. As a lawyer also, you know, 50% is art, 50% is craft. Likewise, you know, in mediation also, there's a lot of uh, art and craft left. Mediator is actually a facilitator. He does not uh, give solutions. He only facilitates the parties to uh, evolve solutions from themselves. It will uh, have a lot of uh, impact on the parties also. Sometimes, you know, there's an evaluative mediation also where, you know, as an expert, you'll have to tell them, Maybe if you're an engineer, if you're a doctor, or if you're a lawyer, or if you're a judge, you know, for that matter, uh, you'll be in a position to say that this is the position. This much you can say. This is called an evaluative uh, mediation also. Other is, uh, other is called a puzzle. I said the three blocks. One, one, the mindset of the judges. Many judges, all said and done, do not think that this is an effective method. They, according to it's a waste of time. Uh, that is, I do not know, I, I'm not anybody to say that, you know, it is because of their ignorance or whatever it is. But, you know, they should have a mind, their mindset should be changed. Under Section 18A, you remember now, the judge should form an opinion on each case as to whether this is a case fit enough to be referred to any one of the four methods of uh, alternate dispute resolution, arbitration, um, uh, conciliation, mediation, local law. So it is the duty of the court to form an opinion. Uh, in your experience, have you seen this uh, duty being performed by the courts? And if the courts take a genuine interest and the calling the parties and the lawyers and telling them that this is something which you should try instead of spending your time and money and energy in court, you should try and you know restore peace and set, settle the matters amicably. If you can give such a, a, a simple uh, suggestions, uh, a simple uh, tips as to the uh, dispute and uh, the way it could uh, be taken forward, etc. I'm quite sure the parties will agree because one word from the court, the parties will really understand. This has been my experience. I'm saying, I'm simply sharing my experience. I'll call the parties and the lawyers also and tell them this is all your problem. The lawyer, the judge should make a little, little homework. The work is a little, you know, you should do a little more homework according to me in mediation if you're a judge. And then tell the parties and the lawyers that this is the problem. You should try a mediation. Two, the mindset of the lawyers. This is a big problem. The lawyers have a feeling that, you know, in case the cases are sent for mediation and they get settled the matter, it affects them professionally. In the sense, you know, they will not get their uh, fee. This mindset should change. This I'll club with the third one also. This mindset should change because the, the, without the proper assistance of the lawyers, you know, no mediator, or no mediation can uh, have very effective uh, result. Uh, I have certain experiences in my own, <laughs> my own uh, mediations. You know, the parties agreed, but uh, next day when they came, uh, they said, sir, my, they told me out of uh, the loud towards me, they have confided to me that, no, sir, my lawyer did not take it. So I thought, you know, I, I must first uh, mediate with the lawyers. Reason is, you know, reason is, you know, the, in once the case is settled in mediation, the lawyer will not get fee. This is this mindset which should change. That's why I club it the third one is called mindset of the litigants. So what do the litigants want? Litigants want their cases to be finished soon, or they want to continue their uh, litigation forever, and you know, teach a lesson somebody else. That will be a minuscule percentage uh, of. Uh, the litigants uh, in that category, where somebody wants to take revenge on somebody else and you know 
keep always some some litigation against somebody and uh, and keep them always in court etc who will spend money who will spend spend time who will spend their energy for this will your next generation be interested you may you will pass on but the, your next generation will not be interested just keep in mind so as far as the, the litigants mindset if you if you talk to them very uh, very 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 frankly they will be quite happy to get an easy solution or a faster solution for their problems i'll tell you one example suppose you know a, 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 a litigant comes to you with a, a section 18 notice uh, and you know it, if i am a lawyer i'll see i can read from the notice what the problem is i know the person who has sent the notice another lawyer will be front of mind what prevents me so i can speak to the litigant that you know you want this case to go to court and settle it or you want this to be case should do you do you mind my trying other methods of settling this but uh, it shall not affect my fees a lawyer should be paid his fees for the case not for the <laughs> daily daily appearances this system of uh, daily appearance fee uh, mindset should change uh, i'm sorry uh, if i have um, offending any of the lawyers please uh, pardon me i'm said in my life experience as a lawyer for over 21 years i never ever charged any client for my daily appearance even after my designation as a senior lawyer also i was a senior lawyer for four years prior to my elevation but even then i did not charge for my uh, appearances in court i charged only for a case if i take up a case i'll see to the words then and my fees are solely to the case and not for bare appearance but in north i don't know how far it is practical i do not know but uh, for those who can afford let them do that but uh, as far as the majority of the litigants are concerned you can tell the litigants at that stage itself that you know if i want to finish your case this is my fee and you should pay the fee and if you go to the court it is your time it is your money it is your energy that you are going to waste so uh, merely because i am settling it um, i am making attempt and getting it settled it does not mean that you don't pay my fees you can tell them in america even when you make a phone call not only america many countries outside india any any phone call that you make to a lawyer or any call the lawyer makes to you for a clarification they charge you uh, in terms of the the time that is spent for uh, speaking to you on the litigation that's that is the situation outside for any because time is the money that is the difference time is the money so therefore if you are able to if we guide the litigants if the mindset the litigants change that you know a lawyer is to be paid for not simply for arguing in the case in the court only but also for all the efforts he takes for settlement of the case then this problem the lawyers can also be solved so the mindset of the lawyer should be changed mindset of the litigant people should change mindset of the court should be changed if there is a, a radical change i say radical means such a there is a serious change radical means going to the root radish root if there must be a radical change in the mindset of all these three stakeholders in the litigation process then there will be marvelous results in mediation this is all i wanted to say mediation rest i will answer you if you have some queries thank you thank you sir um we really had the benefit of your experience to get at least an overview of how as lawyers we can um, play an active role in settling disputes between litigants uh, there are a lot of questions coming in so one common line of question is and let me quote the question that we have received from athar alam he asks how does one try to avoid the impasse created by advocates of either side during the course of mediation this is something that you touched upon but i think uh, a lot of our attendees want you to uh, sort of elaborate on this issue alam i'll tell you my experience how i did it uh, i'll tell you my experience in two ways i try i'm and in fact i've tried successfully in all the arbitrations i have i've been engaged in four arbitrations i've settled in mediation i'll i'll when i share my experience you will understand yeah uh, let me come to the litigation first then i'll go to the arbitration as far as the mediation is concerned you know, i when I, i speak to the lawyers first when the lawyers come and uh, gain their confidence and ask them would you mind my speaking to the parties and uh, settling it uh, yeah they will naturally argue uh, sir there is no point in going for a settlement because uh, i have as uh, abey said you know 
I, I have already decreed in my hand. Why don't I go for a sit? And this is their uh, first argument. I tell them, uh, say, do you think that this is the end of the litigation? Number one. Number two, are you quite sure that you know this decree will not be overturned in the first appeal or in the second appeal? And the third thing, ultimately, do you want this? Uh, people to go, you know, to get to, to be disconnected in their relationships in society with all this litigation, somebody winning and somebody losing. So I try first to speak, to, to mediate between the lawyers and just convince them. I speak to their heart, not to their head. It's very difficult to go to the head of a lawyer, but it's uh, uh, easier for me to, to, to appeal to the conscience of the heart of the lawyer. So I speak to the lawyers and win their confidence. Then I talk to the parties. I tell them, See, look here, merely because you are paying the mediator, it does not mean that you know you should not pay to the lawyers. You should pay to the lawyers also because, but for the, I, I tell them, but for the cooperation of your lawyers, I cannot settle it. So the lawyers also will be happy. The, the parties also will be happy in the sense, you know, that you know, the, 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 the cooperation, presence, participation, and cooperation of the lawyers are also there in the process of mediation. So they'll also be happy. So this is where I do it in the normal mediation. Let me come to the arbitration. In arbitration, uh, I have uh, four different experiences. Uh, my my initial enthusiasm when I started in 18 November, I got I was a sole arbitrator in that case. So uh, I saw I when I read the brief, I said this is a simple dispute. <laughs> it was out of my passionate involvement as a judge in mediation. So also I said it's a simple dispute. So the first day when the matter was posted. I told the lawyers, you know, so why are you, why are you spending your money in paying the arbitrator uh, and the lawyer sector? This is your simple case. Why do you want to uh, complicate it and finish it? Naturally, as I said, you know, the lawyers are not happy with their, their staff. <laughs> they had a grim face. Then I told them, see, this is the service that we have rendered to the parties. So after gaining their confidence, I asked the parties to appear. So in the presence of the parties and the lawyers, I told them that this is a fit case for mediated settlement, but uh, the parties should pay the fees, the fees of the lawyers. And uh, then they said, we'll send for mediation. But they said, they insisted that, you know, sir, you should be the mediator. I said, if the mediation fails, I cannot continue as a uh, arbitrator. They said, sir, it will not fail, 100%. <laughs> it will not fail, you be the mediator. So in terms of the spirit of Section 30 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, I made a simple attempt and I just finished it in uh, one hour. I had a, a settlement hour also. My, the, the arbitrator's fee was drastically cut. It was reduced to 20% because it was uh, finished in uh, two sittings. Though I was not happy with the vote, it, because according to me, an arbitrator who finishes a case uh, faster should be paid more rather than reducing his fees. Anyway, that's a different issue. I left it. I was happy at least that the mediation, my first mediation experience uh, in arbitration was uh, quite successful. Second experience, while well, the matter was uh, uh, in the process of uh, uh, settling the pleadings, I told them, see, now that the pleadings are there, this is all your case. Then why don't you try a mediation? They asked, uh, they, they, they asked me, sir, uh, will you uh, leave us uh, since, you know, it's a corporate uh, dispute. So, uh, so I gave them some tip that, you know, so you have to continue your relationship. Not that, you know, you get an award, the other party goes in 34 appeal, etc., etc. You know, you, and you have a continuing relationship also. So, so I asked the top uh, uh, people in both the, the sides to sit together and talk. They agreed. The top people. I passed an order in arbitration that they should speak. And uh, that is, I think, that is uh, reaching a uh, um, final uh, amicable solution. Third case. When the evidence was over, I just made an evaluative uh, opinion as to what the case is. Again, I told the parties, uh, why, don't you, why don't you try a mediation? Well, at that stage, they agreed, they mediated, and they settled. Fourth case, when the arguments were over, I asked a question to the conscience of the lawyers and the parties. Do you want an award to be passed? Or do you want this case to be settled in, in this route with the assistance of a mediator? Because the dispute is normally very narrow compass. So why don't you finish it also? 
so that was agreed i referred to a mediator because uh, an external mediator was necessary because we were in a uh, panel of uh, three arbitrators it was not a sole arbitrator so but that uh, uh, matter was not finally settled but we got an advantage because you know a major part of the disputes were settled uh, with the mediator so when it came back to us to the tribunal it was easy for us to finish because some legal uh, issues were involved which only the tribunal could have uh, tackled mediator cannot tackle those legal issues and you know, the legal issues could be tackled only through the arbitrators uh, arbitral panel ar arbitral tribunal so we settled that so uh, fifth case when the matter was uh, evidence uh, stage reached yeah it is before evidence yes before evidence uh, one side lawyer I, i saluted him he said sir after all this is this dispute only why don't you ask the parties to go for the mediation the other side the said i have to get instruction i, I knew that the other side will say that then i again I just give a persuasive evaluation as to what the situation is called the parties also and told them that look at this is the dispute so now that it came from the lawyers i was so excited and then you know that case also is in the process of being settled so it all depends on how passionate the 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 stakeholder or rather i'll call myself as a duty holder how passionate the duty holder the court the lawyer uh, are in the in in mediation and uh, the uh, to, to help the stakeholder stakeholder is only the litigant duty holders are the the the, the court the lawyer and the mediator so the, if they have a passionate approach the stakeholder can be helped thank you sir firstly also let me thank you for acknowledging that lawyers do have hearts and consciences uh another question uh, which is uh, very interesting is from bp raja uh, considering the government is one of the biggest litigant he asked what happens in cases where one of the parties is the government or a public sector organization or a bank in that situation is mediation possible because in many cases either because of audit or uh, some sort of later inquiry the government or the public sector is not very enthusiastic about settling a dispute how does one persuade uh, the government to go and settle the disputes yeah it is there where the court and the uh, legal adviser uh, have a major role to play the court has a major role because uh, anything that comes from the court will naturally have to appeal be it the government be it the public sector be it the bank so if the court makes a suggestion and gives an indication that it is better for you to purchase peace and finish it otherwise uh, it will be difficult if you finish at this stage it will be advantageous to you as well so some sort of uh, an evaluative uh, persuasion comes uh, even through formal order also you can pass it also i had a case while i was a judge i made an evaluative in uh, evaluate you and indicate you uh, uh, pass an order uh, as to what the situation is so that you know it could be discussed uh, at the game of affairs and then you know it could be thrown open for uh, mediation because if it is taken forward there is a high risk involved if it is settled through mediation there is only less risk involved and we stand to gain if the stand to gain expression is used by the court and the legal adviser also gives such an opinion that this is only your standing to gain only then no auditor can touch you no controller and auditor and also can touch you because it is a court involved process right. again again i tell you it all depends on the duty holders uh, commitment and passion the court the mediator legal adviser and right. sir uh, um, we have a question by abhay damle uh, he says that parties at times go for conciliation mediation or lok adalat because more out of frustration or more out of compulsion uh, what can we do to improve the situation so that parties willingly go for uh, alternate dispute resolution and not yeah. as a last resort yeah see uh, in, in the, you are right some of the cases you know just to dots from your uh, responsibility court say go for a uh, lona dal go for uh, mediation say in mediation please keep in mind 
you cannot cumbel because uh, it's a process where both sides should agree. Arbitration, there should be an agreement for arbitration. Whereas for uh, this Loga Dialat, even if the parties do not agree also, you can, the court can always suffer. So if you, if you want to dodge uh, from your, uh, uh, what do you call a life, uh, your, your duty to take up the case for trial and finish it up, you know, sometimes you, 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 you simply dodge it to Loga Dialat. That some, rarely happens also. But this can be prevented if uh, lawyers on both sides uh, meet and discuss and that, you know, it is the interest of both sides. So why don't we try that? You know? So it all depends on the lawyers on both sides. The, 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 the fellowship, that's why they're, they're called in a learner brother. So this brotherhood uh, uh, and fellowship among the lawyers is very important as far as settlement of cases, uh, be it in mediation or be it in law and that is concerned. So once the lawyers on both sides agree in principle that this is something which we should try in mediation or law and that, that will uh, go a long way in the in changing the mindset of both sides. Right. Uh, thank you. There is another common uh, theme of questions that we are getting. Um, it is about the characteristics or qualities that a good mediator should have. And a follow-up question on this would also be that do you think there is a requirement for professional mediator institutions as we have professional arbitral institutions is there also a need for a professional media mediating institution there are quite a few there are quite a few there are uh, good institutions uh, the delhi international mediation center is a professional institution in bangalore we have in singapore have i'm a, a member of that singapore international mediation center um, um they, I, there are several such a professional institutions it's certainly good because you know there are, there are such uh, professional institutions. People have a lot of faith and trust in those institutions uh, uh, getting involved in uh, selecting a mediator appropriate to the nature of the dispute and getting it settled. So it's certainly very good to have uh, professional mediation and professional mediation centers. And so what about, uh, according to you, the characteristics or um, the, the sort of... Um, Features of a good mediator, what do you think those are? Yeah, 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 yeah. One, you should have a, a passion for mediation, according to me. That's the most important. Passion for mediation. A passionate mediator will not leave the parties normally. Because, you know, you have a follow-up and then, uh, yes. Number one, passion for mediation. Two, he should be an absolutely neutral person. Three, he should have uh, his credentials very good in the sense, you know, he should be in a position to win the trust of the uh, trust of both sides, and, and a fair amount of knowledge of uh, the, the situations uh, legally and factually. This also these four aspects are important in mediation for a good mediator. Right, sir. Uh, just a follow-up question on this from one Advait Mishra. He asks, uh, how does a good mediator stop? his own prejudices and his own views on the party's dispute from interfering with the mediation process. Misra, say if you are, a, if you are approaching a judge, a judge uh, at least supposed to be trained. <laughs> I don't know. My mind is like that now. Uh, at least or perceived to be trained to be discharging his duties without fear or favor, affection or ill will. So, he will be a totally disassociated or disconnected person from his personal philosophy or ideology or his political views, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the moment you are discharging that function as a judge, he will be totally disconnected. I am telling you, out of my conscience, I can tell you, I have never ever been influenced by any of my views on any aspect because as a judge, you will only see what the law is and what the situation is. And you apply it to the law to the situation and finish it up. Irrespective of uh, your uh, views, because that is uh, totally sealed when you discharge your duties. Therefore, uh, mediators, uh, that's why I said, you know, a mediator should be a person who should be in a position to command that trust of both sides, right. his neutrality, and that, you know, that will be a person who should be, can be confided with, that you'll be, you'll keep confidential, whatever is, uh, is, is all, it's the same as Uberima Fida, good faith. 
this good faith contract is also there between them you know it is confidential he can never ever divulge anything which he has been told confidentially to immediate sir so maybe just one last question uh, we have a question from raghav khanna he asks uh, how can technology be used in adr on or mediation practices and just a question from uh, my side uh, as a follow up on this do you believe that personal interaction as in meeting a person face to face is more effective uh, for settling disputes between parties rather than emails or rather than meeting somebody over a screen 100% dabe uh, in mediation the physical presence of the parties is very important but uh, if that is not possible then you can have because uh, nowadays we are trying i am trying i am doing this online mediation also so therefore uh, left that is left without an alternate remedy you know we always uh, start that you know uh, just before the grounds we say left without an alternate remedy uh, the petitioner um, invokes this jurist extraordinary jurisdiction of the honorable court so we we are uh, there is no other way we can do that so therefore we do this online but if possible always better to have physical presence because you know this because i as i told you, you know it is not an appeal to the head it's an appeal to the heart right thank you so much sir thank you for taking out time and uh, coming and addressing all of us on this issue uh, very often i uh, may i just take one more minute uh, one more sentence because you know in mediation i first tell the parties you know you forget about the, your legal merits merits if you are arguing then it's a matter for the court to decide so don't go on the merits of your case merits and demerits leave the lawyers and the courts to bother you have come to the mediation just to close your head and open your heart because you are not evaluating as to how good is your case how bad is your case how better to solve or better not to solve how will be the final result etc no that is not the situation for a mediation that situation is you know well we want a solution now let us not prolong the uh, the the disputes let's resolve one way or other and we take a bit of give and take somebody gives other body another one takes you know without giving you cannot take so a bit of give and take somewhere you know and then you know that is not uh, under law what is your entitled or with uh, your respected to but you know law apart you are you know uh, taking a, a, what you call in the best interests of uh, the situation and uh, you know it is always uh, uh, just fair proper reasonable and prudent to have a settlement because uh, in one cases in one case i said about mediation arbitration no a party would have got an award for maybe uh, uh, hundreds of crores uh, uh, but you know in mediation that party agreed for a little less than uh, uh, 50 crores and you know he got that money that is immediately prior to this uh, covid so he was so prudent uh, he said in a, a bird in hand is what in the bush is 100% right look at uh, how how uh, clever he was you know he agreed because he got that money and you know uh, that that uh, few crores in hand in this lockdown situation is worth i would say <laughs> a 500 after uh, 10 years no certainly as you said the bird in hand is certainly better than the two in the bush and uh, so i think uh, you were able to point out to us that ultimately the most important person in this system which comprises of lawyers which comprises of judges is ultimately we all tend to forget that the most important person is the litigant and all of us have taken the oath to serve justice and justice is served only when the litigant goes back happy and ideally both the litigants go back happy so uh, we will certainly gain from all the anecdotes that you have shared with us your ideas that you have shared and uh, i was about to say that in the course of our submissions at the end of our submissions we often mechanically say we are obliged but uh, i am sure that all of us are really obliged today for this wonderful webinar that you conducted thank you so much sir we thank really you thank you so much abhay and abigail both of you have been passionate after me uh, you have been after me to have to spare some time i'm happy that i could do that thank you sir thank uh, you god bless you this is what i pay back to the society thank you very much sir god bless you jai hind for all our attendees uh, we would just like to inform you that this will be uploaded 
on our uh, YouTube channel and the link will be shared uh, on our social media pages. So you can go back and revisit this lecture at your own leisure whenever it is convenient for you. Uh, I would also like to announce today that our next speaker uh, is Mr. Dushan Dave, who is the president of our uh, Supreme Court Bar Association. He will be speaking on uh, the topic about contribution by bar associations in contemporary scenario. Mr. Dave, as we all know, is a firebrand speaker and I'm sure his lecture will also be very interesting. So please do join us for that. The details about that will be posted very soon on all our social media pages. Um, I now would like to declare this session to be over. Once again, before we leave, I would like to thank our speaker for coming and delivering this lecture. Thank you very much. I hope all of you stay safe in these difficult times. Thank you. And you too. You too. All the best. Yeah.